Hello and welcome back to the Hollow Grove Grotto Show. My name is Al and uh, this is Bird over there. Those hooting, hollering sounds. <laughs> I'm hooting. I'm hollering. This is the Hollow Grove Grotto Show. <laughs> Hyped up. Hell yeah. Uh, man, I've, we tried to record this at uh, 8.30 this morning for me. And uh, <laughs> we've had so many technical difficulties. We're still getting in the hang of it. I had to uh, we use we use Discord uh, to record our call, and we had some issues with it. So I decided to restart my computer, which is the biggest mistake of my life, because that led to a uh, an hour plus update from Windows. <laughs> so <laughs> also, here we are. It's summoned a landscaper. Right, the landscapers are going crazy outside. They're doing the, the wackiest things. They're just like they're dumping rocks on the ground and then putting the rocks back in a wheelbarrow and then loading them onto a truck. I just don't know what's happening. <laughs> just seems very cyclical. They're just dumping rocks and putting them back. So if you hear some noise in the background, it's definitely the, uh, the, the landscape outside. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, soundscape. Right. That yeah, adds to the, uh, the grove, the grotto feeling makes mm-hmm. you really feel like you're in a cave with the falling rock sounds. And then the miners, <laughs> the miners. Yeah. The people mining, not young young people. Oh yeah, yeah specify. <laughs> not, I have to. not child labor. Yeah. Right. Uh, was... who, who's that? OSHA? I don't want OSHA to give us a violation listening OSHA. to the podcast. We don't have any miners working illegally outside in the in the hollow grove. <laughs> and landscaping, doing the yeah. doing the rock work for my apartment building. <laughs> for for our cave. We live we live in a big cave. <laughs> All right. How you been, Bird? What's going, uh, I've been, what's going I've been on? Good. I've been good. Um, it's been a weird week because I keep forgetting that I don't like live here. Uh, I right. think I've said that a lot. Uh-huh. Like, I think I've said that three episodes in a row. But <laughs> sure. um, I, yeah, I don't home. live here. Uh-huh. And it's weird being home. So I'm going a little crazy. Right. I think I said the same exact thing last time. The same. I'm going quarantine crazy. Oh, uh, I mean, everybody is, dude. But uh, yeah, but now I'm—I exp- never experienced it until now. Mm. It's happened Even to me the- a couple times, yeah. but uh, I'm chilling right now. Like recently, everything's been pretty, pretty solid. I've been working on the podcast, doing YouTube stuff, doing a oh, lot yeah. of uh, trying to get the the word out there, advertising stuff like that. Uh, so I've been I've been doing a lot of research and stuff. Not not been going too crazy. I mean, it definitely happens mm-hmm. though. I I definitely feel you. So. Yo, one thing we should do with the podcast is uh, generate some QR codes and start putting them places <laughs> for like the <laughs> for the podcast like app and stuff like that. Yeah, we'll take them to the to like the first episode. Where do we put it? You mean physically out in? Like, in yeah, the wild, like stickers. Or? We'll put them on like walls and stuff. Oh god! And sounds... people will be like, "What is that?" And then I don't. I never <laughs> see a QR code in public, really. No, I think do I. maybe I've tuned them out. Because they're right. useless, but uh-huh. I feel like if I saw them, I would use them more. Like starting like as of yesterday, when I started uh-huh. getting into QR codes and seeing uh, how cool they are. That's where it's coming from. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've I, never like, really <laughs> used QR codes that much before. I mean, I I feel like it'd be a, a really good prank to just put some random QR codes out there, and then uh, some of them, maybe seventy five percent of them, lead to our podcast, and the other twenty five percent give you conduit. Oh no! Not going to it. <laughs> Give you a computer virus. It's <laughs> uh, a good idea, though. I mean, I don't know. yeah, I feel like I've seen QR codes and stuff mm-hmm. mainly in like um, like packaging and stuff like that to maybe give you like send you to like the website for instructions yeah. on how to build something stuff like that. But other than that, I really haven't noticed very many QR codes. Mm-hmm. Yo, it's like really fast. Like when you like, yeah, I it's just... definitely good. Like it instantly gives you the link to something you want to look at, which right. is really cool. Um, my sister asked for it so she could share it with people easier. Right. Oh, yeah. My computer just went to sleep. Oh, nice. Adding to the technical difficulties of this morning. No, it's okay. It's it's awake. I'm gonna turn <laughs> off my screensaver though. It's a new computer. Um. Right. Yeah. Finally. Finally, the new computer is uh back. Computer update. How is it? Is it a? Uh, I'm assuming it's a, a PC. You're not a you're not a Mac kind of guy. It's a PC. I'm I I like Macs, but there's no way I'm paying the price right. for a computer that's not quite as good as my computer now. Right? Did like you I get would like be paying. 
gaming laptop or yes i just okay. uh, i got a gaming laptop i was gonna build a desktop but i didn't really want right. to mess around with all that yeah and um i need something portable right the uh, convenience of being able to mm-hmm. go on your woofing adventures and farming and stuff and exactly be able to do stuff on the go yeah it's gonna be cool yeah yeah and, this uh, this computer it's uh it took me a couple days to really like get used to it but now right. it's like day three or four and like <laughs> yeah. it feels pretty natural and i'm kind of in love nice because yeah. i actually shut this computer down that's how much i care about it i shut it down because right. it starts up in two seconds yeah i gotcha. I've, I've usually had a two minute startup right yeah your old <laughs> your old computer restart was always took like a, a long time mm-hmm. which i'm hypocritical 20- for yeah. saying but <laughs> i got that in 2014 that's not even that old you know I mean, six years. That's pretty old yeah, for a computer. For a computer, yes. But I think if it would have had an SSD, I think it would still it would still be running pretty well. Mm, right. it, honestly, I I didn't have a lot of problems with that computer. I was just yeah. asking too much of it. Right. Yeah. Like I'm in a anything s- mm-hmm. similar situation. You can you can finish what you're talking about. I, I, I was going to say a story about my computer for oh. after when you're done. <laughs> okay. I was going to say anything. Uh, Anything reasonable that you would want to do with that computer is perfectly doable. Just reasonable video games. Nothing like I couldn't play anything AAA or anything really fun. But yeah, I mean, I can play fun games, but nothing, nothing yeah. crazy. And lately, I've been playing some stuff. But I'll get on into that after your story. Right. Well. Okay. So I built this like my current computer. I've had since around 2011. Really? So this is a very old computer now. It's yeah, it's something that like my uh, my dad helped build with me when I was like mm-hmm. I don't know like twelve or something back then, um, which was a fun experience. Learned a lot about it. Um, it was a really great computer for its time. It was like pretty top of the line. We got all mm-hmm. all great stuff for it. And then over the years, obviously, it's been what, nine years now. Uh, it's just gotten gotten some issues here and there we've had to like update um, the graphics card the um processor over was overheating at some point so we had to get a new uh heat sink to like dissipate the heat mm-hmm. stuff like that uh i've had to get you know so many different like hard drives and uh ssd and stuff like that because other ones were just full or failing something like that so i think it's about time for me to think about upgrading or doing something with mine also oh, yeah. f- for reference you had like a very a uh, petite, rather like small, like, oh, yeah, uh, desktop, right? It was, <laughs> petite. It was, <laughs> it was pretty. It was pretty relatively like portable already. Yeah, but it's definitely not something that you can just you know take with you because you need like yeah. a monitor and stuff like that. I mean, I could bring that, and I am gonna bring a monitor with me. Oh, you are because gotcha. <laughs> sure. the the monitor on my laptop's like really small compared to the oh, this gotcha. huge this huge like. 30 inch monitor i have in front of me right now sure. probably probably not 30 it's probably like 24 or something like that right but yeah. it's pretty big compared to like a 16 inch computer monitor yeah, any monitors monitor. i'm gonna uh <laughs> i'm gonna think about getting some like uh curved monitors or something Ooh. at some point i yeah. like i will do that once like i have disposable money right but yeah, right I now <laughs> i don't have that right now i'm talking about pipe dream oh, stuff yeah. <laughs> yo but the monitor i got if you're looking for a good monitor or anybody any of the listeners are looking for a good monitor um <laughs> i got one i got it from like best buy online mm-hmm. it's like an lg monitor i got it for like 150 bucks and it's like right runs on hdmi and shit who would have who would have thunk that we'd be in the future who thunk? we we get a, an hd monitor <laughs> You're gonna have to post the uh, the ad for that in our in our Facebook group. <laughs> yeah, hey, what a boomer saying! I just said like boomer right. sentence. Yeah, I mean me too. The Facebook group. <laughs> yeah, for real. Uh, I know, I know. I did a little poking around on like Facebook and stuff, and I know I hate on it a lot, but I have seen some like more like communities, like, like yeah. Facebook group stuff. Definitely seems more like uh what i would be into rather than just like the yeah. normal facebook stuff the social media cool. aspect right but the groups remind me just pretty much exactly of what reddit is though yeah so but again, local I don't, right yeah I, I don't know facebook is still <laughs> in my opinion the worst social yeah. media you could have but but, but honestly if some they did, qualities. yeah if they did a thing where it was just the communities which that's right. what reddit is but right. <laughs> um Honestly, that I would be completely behind that because that's actually really cool. That's what I think Facebook should be. It's just connecting people 
but right. social media isn't really connecting people. It's connecting people to their own desire to be liked. Right. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to have to come up with our own social media word because I think you and me, we have a lot of opinions on, on all these different social medias. We could be the next, the next big thing. We I really could be. But, uh, I mean, we, we have a general understanding of what's like toxic, what's pretty cringe, and what's <laughs> not generally like, <laughs> I don't know, moving towards the future. So, hey, I, I, I agree with you in an egotistical sense that, yes, we are all those things, but <laughs> I don't think we actually are. I think like we don't, I don't, I don't know. I like, I, I feel like I don't know anything that's going on in the modern landscape at all. Oh, uh, yeah. Meme wise, culture wise, nothing. I have no clue. Yeah, I all you. I know I mean, is that I'm, yeah. I'm just a, like, I fit in in society because I'm a nice person. That's all it takes. Just be nice. Um, <laughs> but check. Yeah, check niceness. <laughs> but um, yeah, I get you. I mean, we didn't, we don't have to necessarily yeah. make the, like, uh, make the, you know, community. That kind of builds itself. We just have now, to make we're, the class. We're going to be, we're going to be the moderators. The mods. And, yeah, we're the mods. Everybody <laughs> else on the Hollow Grove app is just. <laughs> Right. They're users. We're going to be mods. We're on a higher level. Right. Because <laughs> we've developed the app. We've put in the work to earn this position. Right. And we've, we've put in the hours on the podcast, these back breaking hours of waking up early. <laughs> woke right, up at yeah. 9 30 this morning. Right. 9 30 on the East Coast. Yeah. I woke up at 9 30 and I was still exhausted. <laughs> yeah. I was pretty tired too. I got up at like 8 15 and I laid in bed for just like 15 minutes and texted you. I was like, oh, we still have to do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thinking of excuses yeah thinking of excuses and then here i am one hour later doing all these updates uh <laughs> circling back though so yeah you got you have like a you had a very small like computer but my yeah. my desktop uh its case is like it's it's huge it's literally yeah. like a behemoth <laughs> of a computer it's the biggest it, case i've ever seen is it the same one that you've always yeah, had it's the same one yeah <laughs> It's like, like doesn't it have uh, the button on the front, so you sometimes bump it with your knee. Like, didn't we yeah, used to bump yeah. it? Turn it off. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's yeah. so big. Yeah, the uh, the power button is super easy to hit, and also it's knee like, level. It's knee <laughs> That's level. That's how big it is on right. the ground. Yeah. It's knee That's, level. That is a great way to put it. I don't know why it's that big. I think back then, like when I was when I was younger, and then also like when me and my dad were building it, we were just like automatically assume like oh this this huge computer case looks great looks exactly like a gaming computer mm-hmm. <laughs> let's go with that but you got the been, lights too right yeah i got the lights there's lights in it got blue and red makes like a purple vibe but like hauling this around between the ages of 2000 like from me being like 12 13 all the way to me being like 21 now yeah that's such a long time to be hauling this big computer around from like back home to college back like to college back home like multiple times and going over to like friends houses also when i was like at college we had like some gaming stuff going on uh like the gaming club and people were bringing their computers to like gaming events and stuff like that and i was like there is no way i'm hauling this like 50 Mm -hmm. pound computer (laughs) over to the the uh the the student activities building and stuff like that which i mean like it would be really annoying doing that but right. it would almost be worth it because it'd be really funny. Yeah, <laughs> but then that's so funny. much stuff, and you got to worry about it all getting ruined and stuff, right. or something getting stolen. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's a real hassle, and I, I relate with that completely. It. I would always have like like two suitcases for my computer. I'd have <laughs> one that has like my computer, and like it's right. got pillows in it to keep it safe, and then right. it's got like the keyboard and mouse, and I have another one with all my speakers and stuff. So I've yeah. been cutting. Like I'm not I'm not um, bringing my speakers with me. I got a. Right. I just got like this Bluetooth speaker that I'm gonna use for my computer. Yeah. It's, it sounds great. Uh, I'm gonna do most of my music work in headphones anyway, so I don't really care. Yeah. Ooh, a reminder for the uh, viewers out there: check out Bird's uh, music channel on YouTube. Hey. Uh, link is down in the description below for uh, for YouTube. Hey. Anyone else? I'll, I'll try to put a link on our uh, our podcast website. Anybody wants to check it out or just yeah, thank you. So, yeah, yeah, or if you want to look it up, if you can't find the link, the name's Avion Bird. Avion yeah. spelled with three eyes. It's avian, <laughs> like a like the scientific category for birds or something like that. <laughs> something um, like that. 
and put three eyes in that. A V I I I A N B I R D. That's A V I I I A N B I R D. <laughs> Sound like a what's his name? The uh, the salesman. Yeah, I don't know the salesman you're referring to, but <laughs> you know I know I know the one on the commercial. <laughs> you're right. The salesman. He had a faceless voice. You're right. Uh, he, rest in peace. He died. So yeah, he rest in peace. Oh. Piece. That's what actually that's what this episode's dedicated to. Uh oh, I remember now. Billy Mays. That's who you're talking about? Billy Mays. Who are you talking about? Are you <laughs> talking start... about the uh you're talking you know, you're talking about the uh the what's 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 the product called? <laughs> There's no product. I was just talking about the anonymous voice that reads the phone numbers at the end of oh. commercials. <laughs> you're talking about Billy Mays. <laughs> oh uh, well, yeah, rest in peace, Billy Mays for real yeah, though. I genuinely <laughs> I genuinely like I, I wouldn't say I took it hard when I was a kid, but that one I felt that more than Michael Jackson that year. That's for that, sure. It's crazy because when you're a kid, you or at least when I was a kid, I had the routine of like waking up well before I needed to go to school. Like I went to school mm. around like I walked to school like around maybe seven fifteen or so, something like that. But yeah. I would get up at like six, which was crazy to me that I that, you know, me as a kid getting up at six o'clock in the morning every day. Like now, it's hard to get up at like eight thirty. <laughs> but yeah. back then, getting up at six, and then I would just go downstairs and I would watch uh, TV for like forty five minutes or so. Mm-hmm. And Maybe like sleep a little bit on the couch. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. It's perfect. And then yeah, there'd be all sorts of just random like commercials, infomercials, and stuff like that with the cheesiest like like those TV commercial guys and all those oh, jingles yeah. and stuff like that. What's your yeah. um, most memorable slash favorite commercial? Um, trying to think of like what's the the one that I always got like literally on repeat. I always got Stanley Steamer commercials. Yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> it's not my favorite. I can't think of what my favorite would be, but I just remember burned into my mm-hmm. mind is the the Stanley Steamer uh, uh, makes your home cleaner. Oh. That one's that? terrible. <laughs> Call James it's my G. money and i need to know <laughs> yeah but they're all like on the, the the bus and they're all singing opera right yeah i don't know what I, it, it wasn't always like that was it were they always singing opera or did it that like one, transition i saw that one recently on tv and <laughs> they're still going it was the same commercial that i saw five or six years ago <laughs> and i, I mean, they do that a lot I mean, it works, I guess, if it's it's burned into our brains and they're still doing it. They got something going, but I don't know. I've never once considered even remotely looking into uh, their services, you know? <laughs> if anything, you know it, it's rare in my entire life that I've ever seen a commercial and, like, participated in the product because of the commercial. Right. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. There's a lot of like uh, made for TV or like as seen on TV products as well. Yeah. And all of those are just cringy. You know, it's always like the, the girl like uh, trying to make an egg, but she like, you know, cracks the egg and breaks her finger and <laughs> now, puts it I into love, the pan and then burns it. I love those commercials. <laughs> <laughs> They're always very funny. And then they come up with some product that's absolutely useless. So I agree with you. There's definitely no no commercial has really convinced me to do anything. Except for like I would say fast food commercials are the only ones that get me. Because then it shows me yeah. like their their new special like sandwich or something mm-hmm. at Taco Bell. You gotta go get it. Dude. Yeah. It there was actually hungry. There was one time um like a year or two ago, me and a bunch of our friends were hanging out and we were watching like the NBA um like all star match. Right. And it was hosted by Taco Bell. So mm-hmm. that means every like six minutes you're getting a taco. You're getting right. mentioned about Taco Bell. Uh, and you tortured. know what happened that night? We went to Taco Bell that night and got Taco right. Bell. Yeah. That's, that's, that's probably the only time, which it wasn't me who made the decision. One of my friends did one of our right. friends. And um, he did. <laughs> he did say, man, these commercials are really making me want Taco Bell. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's how it goes. And there's like a, uh, there was like a really big like purge recently at Taco Bell that I heard of that they got rid of. Yeah, they got rid of a lot of menu items at Taco Bell recently, which Whoa. is probably, you know, crisis related. But uh, I am not happy with it. Like I went I went there relatively after they did the purge and mm-hmm. the menu is literally depressing now. It's just it's literally just like tacos and mm. 
like the crunch wrap and that's pretty much it like i didn't really? see anything that looked remotely appealing to me anymore Yo, they, how can how can I've you do that so many like favorite taco bell foods over there yeah. and they just get rid of them one by I one and now crazy. they're getting rid of more yeah i don't remember what's on the full list but if you're like uh if you didn't know about this yeah check into it because taco bell just like gutted their menu <laughs> just Yo, such mm, little left they used to have this thing it was like a a bacon like ranch but it wasn't a ranch it was like a spicy ranch right and it was like a quesarito kind of thing uh-huh. but it had a special sauce and it was yeah i think i, I remember it was like 10 years like it was more than 10 years ago i was young and i right. remember that being like the best thing ever and i had it like like 10 times and then it disappeared forever and i've never right. seen it since yeah my favorite was the uh there was a like half pound cheesy potato burrito Ooh. literally the most delicious thing i've ever eaten. i know what you're it's, talking about it's half just, pound yeah it's a huge burrito and they're super cheap and it was had their it had their like spicy like uh, potatoes which are amazing yeah which i think that they have now gotten rid of or they're in the talks of getting rid of them like they're getting rid of their potatoes which which is i think caused some outcry on social media but uh yeah it was those potatoes with just the like their taco meat and then just covered in like the their cheese sauce which is delicious it was the best burrito mm-hmm. ever and then so they got rid of that like i don't know maybe five mm-hmm. years ago or something four or five that's, years ago that's wild dude why do they keep right. getting rid of stuff did they get rid of the breakfast um they probably definitely have breakfast because that's they, one of their big selling points that's like i've never had their breakfast but i'm like Me anti either. i'm anti fast food breakfast kind <laughs> of not all though i, I kind of like a mcdonald's a uh, mcriddle but i haven't had mcdonald's and right a long time so right i don't know but i can't yeah. i can't even believe that taco bell would reduce their menu unless they have big plans to bring a lot like all oh, old items dude if they're bringing yeah. back the, the like top items from yeah. all time they're not <laughs> they're absolutely yeah they not probably they're not cool enough for that but if they did dude that's yeah. a power play especially in today's day it and would age be a power play. where nostalgia is the biggest seller right. in that our generation perfect yeah we, we would be back. going yeah dude right. i would go back and i would, I would go break further. my i'd break my fast food um fast they to go there it. they just don't get it they're a bunch of cronies dude yeah they, they don't just, they're out of touch and they're oh. gonna ruin their business for that because look at somewhere like arby's dude right <laughs> i've been sleeping <laughs> on arby's have we talked about this uh we haven't talked about arby's no arby's dude it's better <laughs> it's better than people give it credit for and i was one of those naysayers dude i was uh, really talking i was talking a lot of smack about arby's for a long time right. i was like what roast beef that's glorified lunch meat right <laughs> i mean it literally is lunch meat yeah i'm not going there for the roast beef though right <laughs> my Their chicken um, good <laughs> my father and my uncle they they really like arby's okay the only, the only thing about arby's is that um they're they're fairly expensive like on the expensive yeah. side especially for fast food yep and uh, some of their stuff like isn't isn't the best but some of their stuff is good mm-hmm. i've kind of had like hit or miss there so yeah i get what you're saying it has potential it's definitely something that people could easily sleep on but mm-hmm. at the same time i think it's i think it's it's pretty decently like uh where it should be in the yeah. uh, the ranking but so yeah, I, I don't I don't crave it very often. Mm-hmm. There's also like a rival called like a, I don't know if this is a Northeast thing, Ooh, but there's a place called Rax. Rax is hardly a rival to Arby's. Ooh, I would Rax say roast beef. It used to be like a huge chain, but it's really died mm. out in recent years. Well, it's because roast so. beef was only big like when our grandparents were like <laughs> like twenty the boomers. Yeah, the right. boomers. The boomers Eating liked racks. roast beef and chicken livers and weird shit. Oh my god, chicken livers. Gross. But I think the most respectful thing about Arby's is their menu. Their menu is so diverse and like crazy. Mm. Right. It's compared to anywhere else, they're selling stuff that no other restaurants are selling. It's right. like Taco Bell situation. Taco Bell kind of has a monopoly in the, the fast right. food taco industry. Arby's is selling roast beef. They're selling, they got turkey, sliced turkey, sliced chicken breast, I think. And then they right. got gyros. They've got pecan chicken. Good. They got pecan chicken salad. <laughs> pecan chicken salad. They got pecan chicken salad, dude. When, when have you ever heard of that in a restaurant? Yeah, 
I guess. Well, I mean, I, I got a Google Arby's menu. That's all I know on the top. Let me. You're going to make yourself hungry for Arby's now, dude. I'm not hungry. I, I will tell you what I ate after this because I actually did want to talk about what I ate for I'm breakfast. Not hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, Arby's. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. I've been there like several times. I would say I can. I can probably count like up to ten times that I've been to Arby's before. You know, not, me too. Not probably, 20. probably twenty for me. Mm-hmm. They got Rubens, dude. Right, corned beef. <laughs> I, <laughs> what else? Taste. Can you name the other ingredients of a Ruben off the top? Uh, it's it's sauerkraut and Thousand Island dressing, pretty much. Hey, you got bread. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you got it. I've. I don't think. I don't think I've had a Reuben. I might have had one one Reuben. Yeah, Man, you know your Reubens, though. Yeah, I mean, I, I generally know my my sandwiches. Yeah, Reubens are good. They're just not like wow. a, I, I don't really like rye bread, so it kind of throws me off every time. But, mm-hmm. but other Yo, than that, it's pretty good. Listen to this. They got beer battered fish, sweet potato waffle fries, pecan chicken salad sandwich. Dude, we're Co- gonna, we better be getting a uh, better be getting a sponsorship for this for this episode. We're gonna be. Yeah, that's gonna be the title. Their menu items. We're gonna get. We have to get a sponsorship before we can release this. This one. episode is sponsored by Arby's. It's not we've sponsored. got. We've got the meat. <laughs> it's not sponsored by Arby's. They don't have the meats. They've got a. Uh, they've got the the leets at Arby's. They got the, the cleats. <laughs> uh, I think we've talked about fast food like maybe every episode so far. Well, we talked. <laughs> we haven't. Do you know one thing we haven't talked about is the weather. How's the weather there? <laughs> really hot <laughs> can you imagine I, it yeah it sounds hot down there it's, it's actually the most hot it's ever gonna be like has, so far on like uh two days from now it's gonna be 106 degrees good god that's, that's hot that's very hot i'm not going outside that day yeah Yo, you know they got they got mazza sticks at arby's yeah yeah they got mazza sticks <laughs> Hand hash browns that you can get just whenever. Jalapeno bites. Dude, all right, I'm going to end it now since <laughs> we've already left this conversation. I've just kept looking. Right. Um, Arby's, Arby's. Arby's is nothing to sleep on. Give it a shot. TDLR. Don't sleep on Arby's. Give it a shot. Yeah. Check out our sponsor. Use use the promo code HGGGS. <laughs> two G's, not three. Not HGG, three. <laughs> HGGS. You're going to want to click the gift card button, and you're going to go to order right. now. Uh-huh. I'm on the website right now. I'm walking it through. <laughs> All right, but go on yeah. about the weather. It's 106 degrees. No, I'm not going on about the weather. Yeah, it'll Wait, be 106. Isn't it? Isn't it hurricane season? Uh, yeah, it is. But yeah, so the thing about like where I am, I'm far enough mm. inland that pretty much never have to worry about hurricanes. But you get wind. We do get a lot of wind here. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's okay. very windy. Um, oh, one yeah. thing you brought up is like. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm actually thinking about possibly not staying here. <laughs> yeah, for well, like, it, uh, it's really hot. No, definitely I, the hot. I got used to pretty easily. Like, oh yeah. Anybody who says like they don't want to go to Texas or anywhere else because it's too hot. Like honestly, I've been here for I don't know what's it been four months already. Like, wow, it's like going to be 106 like in in two days, and I'm like whatever. Like it's it's really. Just you have to get used to it. It's nothing yeah, that bad. You know, like, that's like really, said, it's really good to I, know. If I was homeless or if I was a construction worker, I would not put Austin, Texas on my radar because I wouldn't <laughs> want to be outside and hot. But like for me, like the only times to go outside, especially during now, like being home in the quarantine, like I don't mm-hmm. go outside in, in general anyway. So that's part of it. But mm. <laughs> other than that, like I when I go outside, it's just it's just warm. It's hot. It's whatever. And then by once it becomes like winter time, once it's normally like super cold, it'll just be like nice cruising weather. So wow, that's awesome. I, yeah. So, but yeah, I've, I'm thinking about uh, in a couple of years possibly moving out of here. I don't know. The vibe here is is okay. It's definitely mm-hmm. it feels it feels hip feels feels cool. But it to me where I'm at, I'm not in downtown, so that's one part of it. Uh, okay. I may I may end up going there downtown to try it out. But even then, like. Um, mm-hmm. It feels like all of the negatives of a big city without the positives. Mm. So it's got the traffic. It's got the the noise. People, the noise. The, the, the air. The air. It's got all the stuff that you don't want from a big city. And then it doesn't have the positives, which to me, a positive of a big city is like uh, kind of like convenience. It's like the vibe of being in a big city, the feeling mm. of being like downtown or like having the skyline. 
and having uh, like a really great view from like an apartment, something like that. You know, yeah. it's, it's the city vibe. That's I have none of that here. So it's all just a lot of people, too much traffic, uh, and like uh, not too much to do. Honestly, like I said, I don't live in downtown, but. Like, I, I can't even see downtown from where I'm at. It's like the layout of Austin is very strange to me. So, I don't know. We're thinking hmm. about, about going to to Houston still. Houston okay. we loved when we went there. Yeah. Um, it had a completely different vibe, and they have some really cool neighborhoods and stuff. And they have, like, um, high-rises and stuff, which are, like, the mm-hmm. apartments that have, like, you know, 20 floors or whatever. Um, here, they're all, like, low-rise apartments that have, like, four uh-huh. floors. So, that's part of it. Okay, yeah, high rise would be pretty sick. Right, yeah. So definitely want to go to a high rise. We're thinking of moving to Houston. The thing about it is it's just if we can get a job there because Houston's a big like oil uh, industry mm-hmm. city. Yeah, That's that was the hard. reason you chose Austin. Right. So we're gonna just try really hard to get a job there if we can. If not, we'll just mm-hmm. book it to like California probably, to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah. So <laughs> That's probably where I'm headed. I'm headed west. Right. I'm about yeah. to I think I was going to do Hawaii. Uh, I want to wait a second, though. I want to get a little bit uh, more farms under right. my belt. So yeah. I'm just going to I'm gonna run around America and just go to a bunch of different ones. Yeah. That'd be cool. And, it's like yeah, a road trip. Keep going. Yeah. And yeah. I know just the longer I spend away from home, just the more I grow and the, like, the better person I become. So yeah. I'm excited to like really get out there. Right. Because I felt it in just six days. I've changed so much, which... It might be evident from the podcast, maybe not. You probably have to like meet me in person to like really see the right. differences in me. But <laughs> right. uh, I definitely feel way different since I've been back. Yeah, I can imagine. And, mm-hmm. It's weird. Yeah, and yeah. I'm sure you've changed a lot moving. Like you've been gone for four months in a whole different city. Right, a whole a different city, different whole part new of life, America, whole mm-hmm. new life. Yeah. And, um, like in general, like we kind of mentioned before, like I just been doing a lot of like personal growth and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully soon I can get like a a job and stuff to make it a little bit more formal living here and, uh, can start making some, some money to start paying off some bills and stuff. So, Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm excited for sure. Making money sounds nice. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) So we've gotten the, uh, the, the laptop update from you. I've got an update on the, uh, the roach situation from the previous Ooh, episode yeah so <laughs> i mentioned that like uh we ran into a couple roaches which we talked to like uh somebody in the apartment here and they they said <laughs> that it might just be water bugs which are <laughs> basically roaches but they're not cockroaches right and you asked me if they bite which <laughs> like i said water bugs are, are known to be biters so <laughs> that was not 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 a bonus but so we had somebody come uh <laughs> i ordered <laughs> it's kind of funny so our our apartment we pay like five dollars a month for like pest control which okay. i didn't even realize but we we utilized that so i called up the apartment and said yeah hey, that's reasonable we've had a couple roaches they may be water bugs so can we have somebody come check it out right and they said sure so they sent somebody out this tuesday and uh i thought it was so what i thought is that they were going to come and they were gonna it was going to be a guy just one guy and they were going to come and they were going to inspect <laughs> the apartment look around, see if they could find anything, maybe give us some tips about like, what's the best practices, you know, don't leave out food, maybe don't leave out water for water bugs, you know, whatever. But instead, I hear a knock on the door Tuesday, <laughs> and I go to open the door. And it's, it's two guys, one guy's built like a truck, and the other guy just looks like a businessman, he's got like a suit on. <laughs> and the, the, the guy with the suit, he's, he just says like, uh, you order the roaches <laughs> something like that it's like you got the roaches and i'm like oh yeah come on come on in that's us and uh they just like shuffle in to our apartment and uh i quickly explained like we've had a couple roaches and stuff like that we took a video and we showed them and they said um because like, i asked him if they were water bugs or, or cockroaches and he's like oh no those are the big guys those are those are straight roaches ain't no water bugs here and uh, <laughs> then they then they said uh you got, you guys got a got a couple bathrooms, something like that. Can you show me where the washer dryer is? And I'm like, sure. And I show them kind of like the the general layout, and they said, all right, get to we're getting to work. And then within literally, I would say 15 seconds, they scoured the apartment, sprayed <laughs> like sprayed basically like wa- like Walmart like insecticide around the perimeter of like our bathroom and our water, like our washer and dryer and our kitchen, and then. 
I was like asking them questions while they were doing it because I thought they would take a while to do it. I was mm -hmm. like, you know, do we need to move anything around? Or, like, do we need to like few? Do we need to open the windows? Is this going to be safe? Like, oh no, we got it, we got it. You got, you guys are good. <laughs> and then I, as I'm talking to them, they're like, they're moving from the inside of the apartment back to the hallway to the front door, <laughs> and then. And I'm like, oh, is there anything else that we should like <laughs> that we need to be like, you know, asking about? Is like, there anything that we can do to prevent them? We're like, oh, it's, it's okay. We'll we'll spray the front door for you. That's okay. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> so within a, a span of like 30 seconds, I've let them into my home. They've said, oh, got some roaches. <laughs> Just <laughs> sprayed around and left immediately. It was so fast. I've never seen something more efficient, yeah. but also just unsettling half, in my life half assed right it was it was very very strange but i yeah. i can confirm that there have been uh zero since like i don't know we saw the last one like a week and a half ago so we wow. have no more roaches so that's good they, they know their stuff right they know their stuff they know Dude, that, get in and I, I feel like i'm in the wrong business <laughs> yeah that's what we're saying <laughs> we should quit the podcasting biz and get in the roach business get in the roach business uh that was quick that was wait, would, you, would you want to be the suit guy or the spray guy <laughs> they were both spraying oh wait but... <laughs> they both one guy had a suit on and one guy had a, what like an insect outfit uh no they, they were, not, one, not... one guy was just normally dressed and one guy had a suit on but the one guy was just super buff just casual right the guy was just huge and then the other guy was just like small it was, was kind of like wait. just like a like a manager and then the the worker but they both worked it was very confusing to wait, me, how but... formal was the guy uh i mean semi-formal okay like was uh, it like polo or sport jacket uh i think it was just a t like one guy had a t-shirt and the other guy had just like a the other what, what was he wearing it was like uh yeah it was it was more like kind of like jackety less like a formal suit but it was definitely okay. like a, a full-on like like Track matching suit. top and bottom jacket with tracks <laughs> it may have been something like a tracksuit but a little bit more fabricy. <laughs> It was yeah, I, I just got a really cool windbreaker, um, mm. and they have matching pants that go with it. Mm. But the the jacket was already like sixty dollars, so I don't need to buy like a, a forty dollar pair of pants because I already right. own a pair of pants from the same store. This is a business, right? Yeah, I might shout them out. Yeah, they're um they're called a uh, Gecko Hawaii. Oh, sure, it's a local <laughs> business. I don't know if it's local or not, but Riff Raff did a did a thing with them. <laughs> <laughs> there's a uh, we also used to go to the um like uh thrift stores a lot back when we were in oh, high yeah. school we'd go to uh the uh like uh you know the local place would be like a salvation army stuff <laughs> yeah, like that salvation army and just get like the the weirdest clothing for like i don't know like a dollar or whatever yeah. it'd be like a, a full suit for like a dollar <laughs> something crazy oh yeah i just threw away one of my suits like the one i wore yeah. for a uh, halloween Right, because it got a little muddy, and I was like, "Am I gonna go get this this khaki suit dry cleaned, mm -hmm. or am I just gonna throw it away?" Because I don't right. like I've been saving that suit for so long for, um, potentially one day needing it when I'm famous, like needing it for a white like a red carpet <laughs> affair or something. <laughs> but I I thought about that realistically. I was like, "I'm gonna buy a new suit." Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to the you're red not, carpet. You're not gonna wear a, a thrift store Salvation yeah. Army suit to the red carpet. <laughs> and funny, not, yeah, and there's not a lot of occasions where I'd wear that suit. Even though you know the suit I'm talking about, right? The khaki one I used to wear in high school. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah, that one fits me so damn perfectly. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> and the pleats are crazy on the pants. Right. Yeah, I <laughs> bought a uh, what was it a corduroy jacket? Yeah, I know the one you're talking about. The ugliest looking. Yeah. It was like a. It's like a yellow brown, not even a good yeah. brown. It's a yellow brown, like a Dijon. Yeah, Dijon, <laughs> Dijon mustard color jacket with the corduroy lines and stripes and stuff. It was <laughs> the Dijon yeah. corduroy, and I wore that. So yeah, um, we had uh, we were in the jazz band. We 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 performed for the uh, the school's talent show, and I wore that that yeah. disgusting corduroy jacket one time. Yeah. I wore. Remember yeah. when when I wore the yellow suit and uh, with the the blue shirt underneath and the pink tie, and then you wore the. Right. the like we had, we were both pastel colors. We'll have to find uh, a, p a picture of that and uh, cyan put it on and salmon. One day. Yeah, the cyan and salmon days. Right. But yeah. I, that my senior year, we wore the craziest things. Because right, then yeah. there was the one night, or oh, my junior year, where I came out and I had the hat 
with the flames all over it. I was wearing all, all right. black, all black, <laughs> black dress clothes, flaming hat, and my head's down, tilted down with the head. Right. Like and I'm playing the bass guitar. And then the music starts playing. That curtain opens. I tilt my head up. Eyeliner. <laughs> <laughs> I've got eyeliner on. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I can't even. Uh, they were I, shocked. The people I in the crowd, believe. you can just see the look on their face. They were appalled. I can't believe I was a part of the jazz band legitimately as the guitar player. Because back yeah. then, back then, like I was very heavily like, you know, we, we were in percussion. So we played drums and uh, yeah. xylophone, stuff like that. So I was very rusty on my guitar in the first place. Like yeah. I was in between where I had taken my lessons when I was young and now where I'm picking it back up. So I definitely mm-hmm. was not up to snuff. On top of jazz, guitar is extraordinarily <laughs> difficult to understand. Yeah. Like... I would be perfectly fine if I could just, you know, look up, you know, a guide of how to play the song. But the songs are all wacky and, you know, weird and a certain jazz chords. Yeah, they're jazz chords. So everything's, you know, uh, the sus seven, a sus seven, you know, weird (laughs) chord names. I mean, you really played that. I didn't even really think about that. Like you were actually playing that stuff. You know, it's (laughs) usually pretty quiet. It's like it's It's always really cringy. The only like saving grace I had was the guitar solo that one year. <laughs> yeah, you did have a guitar solo. I, I had yeah. a bass solo my senior year. All right, that was cool. You were way better at bass than I was at playing the bass. Like, hey, the bass guitar. is so easy. Right. But, <laughs> the guitar was so hard to understand. All I did was write in all the notes and then just memorize where they were. And then I already had right. the chops from guitar. But it was I was like not good enough to like stand and play, though. Right. But I, I did. Like, cause I had the solo and the, there was one, I put my leg up on the amp and was like really jamming. And then <laughs> right. there was one day I stood up on the chair and was like doing kind of like a Beatles rock, but I was like kind right. of wobbling. And then I went to the last night, I went to the front of the stage and was really jamming. But right. all, all of those times were so sloppy. Like my <laughs> solo did not sound that good. <laughs> right. Uh, of course we have like a full keep in mind we have a full jazz band like blasting their trumpets and horns and stuff behind us so most of our stuff was like not able to be heard anyway but yeah it was just oh i was heard yeah you you did have very loud very loud uh amp for you mine is always like in the comfortable range yeah Mm -hmm. I remember Basically, I was able to i was able to do i was actually thankful for whenever i got like uh, a solo or something that was like notes because the notes I could just transcribe I could just uh, you know like you said write them down and then memorize yeah. them and stuff like that but the chords I would literally spend yeah. half of our practice googling like one chord and I wouldn't be able to find a single like reference guide online for jazz guitar chords because really? apparently you're supposed to just know how to do it yeah, there's no you training for that you either get a book that knows it, or this is what everybody used to do. Um, you had to meet somebody. This is before the internet, right? Or books like this is what the Beatles did. There's a story of the Beatles saying this, or one of the. I think like they said that there was um a guy in another town. Like they had to take like an eight, like not an eight hour, probably like a three hour bus ride somewhere. Right. To go meet somebody in another town just because they knew how to play a chord that they did. And then they, right. they taught them the chord and then they went back and they're like, I know it. And then they taught people that chord. I feel like it's still that way today. Cause I was, it I is kind of that way. But we the internet. A, we had a music teacher, like a new music teacher come to the school. Our, <laughs> our very lovely old sweet, like uh, we had a very, um, very passionate and kind lady as a uh, music teacher for uh, as long as I can remember at the school. And then oh, we got a new music that. teacher and he was... Uh, for a lack of better words, uncomfortable, uh, mm. to say the least. <laughs> I, I forgot about that guy entirely. Right. And so he was a guitar player. Um, and I went to him for like lessons one day after practice. Like uh, I, I told Mr. I told our band director that we were like um, that I was having some difficulties with the with the jazz guitar chords and stuff. So he was like, oh, OK, just have a just go have like a, a sit down lesson with the um, the music guy because the music teacher because he, he plays guitar. So I went there <laughs> and learned absolutely nothing. Like I, yeah. I cannot remember even what happened during that that meeting that I had with him. I can't recall. I know what yeah. he looked like. I know he was holding the guitar. He was sitting down on a stool. But I cannot tell you <laughs> for the life of me what he taught me. It yeah. was absolutely useless. I love that um, people who don't play guitar have no clue how difficult <laughs> jazz guitar is. Right, yeah. Like, it's... regular guitar, anybody can play regular guitar. Jazz right. guitar, you've got to be, like, 
a nut. You got to right. be like really into that shit. Which is why it's super funny. Well, I was like a campfire guitarist trying to yep. <laughs> learn how to play jazz guitar. Yeah, I'd consider myself a campfire guitarist right now. Right. Um, but it it's a little more than that. Right. I think there's a there's what what would be the next step up from a campfire guitarist? I don't know. That's what we would be, there's different. It's not. I don't think it just goes levels. I think it's like more categories of what you particularly do. Like there's the shredders or the the jammers right. or the, the noodlers. Yeah. You know, I I noodle a lot. Um, I don't really shred. Cause I'm not really into metal or anything like right. that. Yeah, not me anymore either. There's yeah. no reason for me to like. I would love like I I need to work on finger speed for sure. I just need to just keep doing scales over and over again. Oh, for like, I know what we are. We're garage band guitarists. Hmm. Yeah, because we played a lot more garage band than we played real guitar. Right, and also like um. I no, that's rock band. Rock band. <laughs> you singing a rock band? <laughs> yeah, garage band. I, I did do a lot of that when I was younger. So. Right, yeah. garage band. I'm just thinking of like garage band to me is just like you're you're with your buddies and you're mm-hmm. just like messing around. You can play through a whole song, yeah. And you have like a you have a few songs under your belt and you know how to play them good. And you could play through a whole song and you could have like a lead scene or a scene for you. You'd be good. That's more than a campfire guitarist for me. Oh, I'm, I'm further than that. But campfire guitarists can play through whole songs and sing them. They can, in my opinion, like you're but, not playing guitar at a campfire unless you can play it because there's other people at the campfire. Yeah, I like get if you. you can't play guitar, there nobody's gonna be okay with that. But you're playing like kumbaya and you're playing like okay, I don't know. You well, know. there's different stages to the campfire guitars because <laughs> like I would consider myself like um, I can I can play like ten songs, so I think I'm further than the garage band. Right. I can play and I can sing at the same time. Well, garage bands probably knows that many too. You know, it, it, we don't need to categorize anything. We're, we're, <laughs> we're like low intermediate guitar players. Right. That's the perfect way to put it. <laughs> low Our, we're being a little generous. We might be late right. beginners still, honestly, because uh, I can't, I don't have the fretboard memorized. I don't have the cage right. system done. Like that right, stuff's okay. very important to the foundation of guitar that you learn when you're like a young person taking lessons or whatever. Right. Yeah. And, um, uh, I wish I would have done that early because now it's just super boring and I don't want to do right. it. I got a, uh, I got another update. Yeah, Ready? let's hear it. I got a, um, I got a, a special new, uh, I don't know what you call it, a gadget of sorts, possibly. A gizmo. <laughs> it's a gizmo. That's perfect. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> I got a, um, a robot vacuum cleaner for the first time in my life. Ooh. Yep. Is it a, is it a Roomba? Um, not a Roomba. <laughs> um we've gotten like a brand that's that's pretty like pretty highly rated and we tried it out we're actually this week's sponsor better version this uh, week's second sponsor sponsor. uh it's i think it's called like a eufy e-u-f-y uh a vacuum robot vacuum cleaner so we've obviously roomba is like kind of like the the more name brand or whatever yeah but it's like band-aid but like not many people have them (laughs) Not many people have robot vacuum cleaners in the first place, so I don't think that there's really an established robot vacuum cleaner market, to be honest. Well, so just pick you, whichever when you one when you think rated. of a electric vacuum cleaner, robot vacuum cleaner, do you think robot vacuum cleaner or do you think Roomba? I think robot vacuum cleaner still. I think Roomba because it's the band aid effect, like we talked about in the yeah. last. I get you, but I don't think. Yeah, I I forgot about Roomba. Like honestly, yeah, like when we were, I did when we were until. At that. I forgot it until you said the word robot vacuum cleaner. Then it popped right. in my head. Because that's I, the only I, one I you know for sure. reference. Yeah, I would, yeah, that is true. But I, I wasn't quite sure if that was even correct, but it was the muscle memory. It just came out right. of my mouth. Exactly. I just knew. So not a Roomba, but it's the, it's the same principle. So I, in my, what I've gathered from the research, I think what a Roomba is more capable of doing. Um, so Roombas, I think, are a little bit more expensive possibly they may have a cheaper one but i think they're more expensive and they have like the feature which is what you think of the typical feature is where you can like map out kind of like the the area of your room or your apartment or your house or whatever you can like map pre-map it out and you can set a route for the robot to go on to so that it goes around i don't know they have some like uh some you know tracking that you just like set it on a route and you manually uh use the remote to move it around and then it remembers the route right so that's like the okay, wait, wait. So tell me exactly what you do in this thing. You're you're using a lot of words. You're saying route and map out. How are you? How are you doing this? Are you? This, are you no, manually? This is, is this an app? Are you? Are you manually walking right. around your so apartment? This is what the upgraded versions I think can do. This is not what I have. 
Oh, okay. the one that I have is much funnier. So the <laughs> upgraded ones, I think you can, you know, use uh, use an app, or they come with a remote where you can actually manually control it, and you could like oh, okay, set okay. a path, like you could you could make your own path, and then it records it, and then just goes that path, whatever. But <laughs> the one that I have is has much more personality in the sense that yeah. it literally just goes in a line until it hits something and it bumps it and it just goes like, uh, and then it backs up and then goes another direction. Yeah. And then it does that on repeat, literally for, for like an hour and a half. <laughs> so it just keeps going, bumps into something, uh, and then just it know, makes goes another way. Uh, just, I'm <laughs> like adding dramatics here, oh, okay, okay. It's, <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. It makes some sound. It makes like a, like a clanking yeah, sound like, whenever yeah, it hits something. A- Right. <laughs> it's very funny. Wait, so, so does it does it get everything? It's amazing. That's what? that's the point I want to bring up. It's like if if you sit there and watch it, you'll think it's literally the stupidest robot you could ever imagine cuz it just one it'll go over the same you, you if you watch it it goes over the same area for the like 10 minutes and it it gets stuck sometimes like but it always gets unstuck, which is amazing. <laughs> Whenever it gets stuck, it always gets unstuck no matter the circumstance. If it gets like tangled in some cords it like sucks the cord up and then somehow it gets out and the cord is fine and it always gets out and uh it's has like it has like a suction like a vacuum on it and it has brushes and stuff and it each time that it's done it has literally a dust like the dust collector is full of dust so it does a, a great job and uh like i said if you watch it it looks like the stupidest thing but by the time it's done it truly does pretty much get everything in our apartment that's pretty wild and yeah. Do you notice a quality of life improvement since you've gotten it? Absolutely. So the reason we got it is because we live near a street and it's okay. super dusty, especially being in Texas, I think has yeah. a dust effect. So everything is super dusty here. And we just got tired of sweeping every day. So mm-hmm. we got the robot vacuum to get rid of that. And okay. it does great. Like I said, it's, it's literally full of dust each time. Like it's getting less and less now that we've used it for a few days. Um, mm-hmm. But it's great. Yeah, we love it. And the best part, the part that is actually smart about it is that when it's like uh, done with its cleaning or when it's basically when it's like dying, the battery's almost dead, it finds its way back home to its charging station, mm. which is that's crazy outlandish to me. Like <laughs> when we saw like the description for it, I was like, that's there's no way that's going to work. But <laughs> each time so far, like I said, we only had it for a few, four days, whatever. But each time when it's like dying, it goes into like, searching for home mode and then it just it, it takes a while it take it <laughs> it's still stupid but it does find its way back home once it like That's gets so close crazy. enough it kind of just like goes into like auto lock on mode and just lines up with it and goes in yeah it's amazing dude the uh, future is here we were watching a lot of ai videos yesterday mm, ai videos what yeah just stuff like uh recent uh stuff and discoveries there's this one ai it could tell you what like just by hearing audio it could tell you what was going on right. like where if it was a video of the beach it could tell you it was a video of the beach it could tell you there were seagulls it could tell you there's people like it could with more accuracy than people right it's That's like crazy. it's already already more accurate than people with identifying things by sound which is crazy because now robots are going to know like where they're at right just by hearing they'll just know which well, is think, i don't think, think that's know, dangerous, like, you think they'll know about themselves is what you're saying they're going to become self-aware Nah, I mean, they'll be self-aware at some point, but I'm not really scared of that because, right. I mean, what are they gonna if do? They're, I don't see it really possible for them to just go and exterminate the human race for, <laughs> for they, and every single human. Right. Like, even if they, they go run the process in their mind to, we ask them to help solve the world's problems. What's going to solve the world's problem is going to be getting rid of humans because humans are doing more damage than help, which that's right. what people say. I don't think that's true, really. We've done a lot of good. I mean, for people, yes, but I think right. for our planet, we are fixing a lot of problems that we've made. And right. um, I think it's kind of like also I don't know. A, a fallacy to believe that yeah. if there's literally a race of billions uh, of people on yeah. a planet that it's not going to cause some environmental effect. So basically what we're doing yeah. is just trying to course correct that. But there's no way that you're going to have that many of a race of something without doing something bad to the planet. So it's not mm-hmm. like inherently yeah, yeah, yeah. humans like being faulted. 
like yeah. to a point that they're destroying stuff. It's just the the fact of if you have living organisms that are that massive a scale, mm -hmm. it's going to happen. So that's definitely true, and we we are doing some things that suck, but it it's right. our that's not our fault. We We're just got to work with it. Yeah, but um, so I don't. I think maybe AI will think that getting rid of us is the answer. But I can't right. imagine that they would exterminate every single human being on the planet. Um, yeah, maybe, not. maybe they'll kill all the evil people. I could see that. That <laughs> is maybe realistic. But I could also see them valuing life in general. Like, I right. think that's an objective truth is that life is valuable. And the computer is going to recognize that. They're not going to have the egos that we have and the selfishness that, like, in the, the, like, doomer mentality that we have that life isn't precious you know life is very precious and right. um i don't think they're just gonna steal it i think they're just gonna help us out and then do whatever they're supposed to do i don't know what they're meant to do like they're right. way smarter than us they're probably meant to go run shit in the fourth dimension the fifth dimension once we create this <laughs> ai like right. i don't know what's going on i don't yeah. i don't have those answers that's interesting like, but I, yeah like robots they don't really have, I wouldn't imagine they would have like existentialism like humans do. I'm not sure if they would, if they would think that there's like an impending death coming or like a doom. Cause if they're robots, they shouldn't really die anyway. Yeah. Um, unless like someone shuts them off. So I, I think that that like fear factor would be gone. So that, yeah, like you're saying, I think they would probably maybe have some like empathy maybe for humans. I'm not sure. Yeah, if that's something we that's are, possible. we are like, we aren't permanent like they were very be. mortal yeah exactly because yeah, they even though they they aren't immortal they really aren't even mortal though they're not alive they're just right. conscious which i don't even know what that means yet because it hasn't really happened we don't have these self-aware like we haven't created this life yet but it's, well, what, it's like, very what, soon. what makes us mortal is that like we no matter how hard we try yeah. like we end up dying anyway right but like yeah. for robots, like they could easily just like repair themselves and you mm -hmm. know get rid of the rust and just live, yeah, you know, forever. Get some upgrade. Especially if parts. there was more than one, they could just take care of right. each other forever. Just swap out parts and stuff uh -huh. like that. Like if we swap out parts, we still die. So <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's not too unrealistic that we're not gonna die. I've been saying that since high school. I think we're gonna live forever, right. <laughs> right. and it's gonna start. This is what's gonna happen. And I was getting right. a kind of debate with uh, Sig Saganero yeah. last night. Go on your uh, tangent about how we're going to live forever, bird. <laughs> I, I've had, like, I, it's way more fine-tuned than it used to be. Right. But the way it's going to happen, 100%, if we don't just evolve into AI, which is a very big possibility, they're just going to put AIs in our brain. Right. Um, and we're just going to evolve past the human race. But what I'm thinking, if we want to keep the human experience as close to the human experience as possible while living on earth and still enjoying it. I think the way to do that is going to be, well, first right now I'm not going to do this because I have a very fine body. Like it's I'm able-bodied, but let's right. say I'm, I'm like 70. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting sore probably by like 35, even 40. Right. I'm getting sore. It's starting to suck getting out of bed. Most likely. Right. <laughs> like you're getting old. And by the time we're like 80 and really hurting, yeah, got the bones the crunching the, and yeah, thinking the, and the technology is going to be there to replace our body parts. I think with prosthetics that are better than our body parts and even look natural, like they're going to yeah. have skin on them, they're going to feel natural. They're going to have mean, artificial nerves in them. We're going to be able. That's to fine, but we're still going to die yeah. though. No, but think about that. So we replace our legs, we replace mm -hmm. our arms, we replace our whole body, whatever. Right. But think about this. They already, I've read this a couple years ago. I, I got to uh, fact check this and see if it's still real. But I read that they've invented a heart, a robotic heart that doesn't stop beating. Right. But there's more than just a beating heart to keep something well, alive. That's but... what I'm saying. If we, we replace everything that doesn't stop doing what it's supposed to be doing, and then we get some sort of medicine that makes our brain reverse aging which they are already starting to find in um rat studies there's some sort right. of thing they're using to reverse the effects of alzheimer's and stuff once we have all that stuff i just don't see it possible once we're like bulletproof and stuff like i just can't see us dying so we're basically just going to become cyborgs then. we'll basically become cyborgs but it's going to feel real it's going to be it's going to we're going to be cyborgs that's it we're going to look like humans but we're going to have artificial parts and we'll right. end up living as long as we want to live. And then we get right. to decide when we die. Because at that point, death isn't a part of society. Yeah. Death the is biggest... just what people choose to do when they're ready to be done. 
Right. Yeah. The biggest impeding things right now is, yeah, obviously you get like very wrinkled and your stuff stops working. Mm -hmm. I could see like replacing your organs and limbs, but let's go as far as like replacing like the whole like, like skeletal system sounds difficult Mm -hmm. to me, you know, like you could, there's a lot of bones that are just going to be really hard to get to if you just can't really replace. They might not replace that. They might have some sort of serum that just makes your bones super strong. Gotcha. Okay. And then you got the skin problem. You'd have to like reskin yourself. Well, <laughs> we, I'll like when you replace your leg, they're probably going to chop it off. Right. And then they... give you a, a fake leg with fake skin. Sure. But what about the parts that you can't chop off? Like your shoulder and your neck and your. Well, they will. They'll, uh, they, I don't know. Dude, these they are 80 will. years. This is 80 they're years. Chop off your neck. <laughs> I just do not see it possible for the technology not to advance uh-huh. so unbelievably far in 80 years. 80, 80, years. 80 years from now. We'll be 100. I could see. I could possibly see like. 200 years no now. way dude that's that being a that's baloney <laughs> that's actual baloney. 80 years well i'm excited i i can't wait <laughs> honestly but i can just get some replacement parts and not get dementia and just go crazy that'd be cool so mm-hmm. yeah i don't think we'll get dementia especially if we take care of our brains now um yeah, with lion's brain. mane right and big lion's brain mane. yep big brain um, yep. both of those do have regenerative properties um right. somebody was saying there was a guy on the Joe Rogan's podcast. He uh was talking about Lion's Mane and the benefits and how it helps people mm-hmm. out with like concussions and stuff like in right. CT yeah. uh Alzheimer's. Ashwagandha. Well. Ashwagandha. I don't even know what Ashwagandha does, quite frankly. <laughs> I haven't taken them in a long time. Um was it, was I think that the other one? 5-HTP. Ah, f- is that a is that a robot pill? <laughs> nah, it's a serotonin <laughs> inhibitor. <laughs> Sounds like you're. I don't take. I haven't taken any of these in a few weeks though, because uh, I'm a robot. I don't even know why. I just I don't feel like using them all right now. I don't feel that bad. I feel pretty good. Sounds good, bird. Well, but I need is... I need to be healthier. I've been feeling like shit, but yeah, wrap it up. Yeah, we're wrapping it up. Uh, this has been a good one. <laughs> hope you hope you feel better, bird. Oh, also, like on a on a quick note, uh, we we can say that a, a bird is safely uh, COVID free, so he oh, yeah, didn't get the didn't coronavirus. Matt, so. I did an update on that. Um, no, no, not in the podcast. We got to get it on yep. air. Or else oh get, yeah, get a bunch of hate mail. So no COVID. Yeah, so we're all good. Everybody's healthy. Bird's family's good. So we're all clear. And it's because uh, I, ca- I casted a spell. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> you put a hex on your family. A good hex. While you're in Tennessee. White, white magic. White magic. Uh, so uh, yeah, so um, that's it. And uh, hopefully you'll come back next time. Check out uh, YouTube if you're listening uh, on any other platform. And uh, check out the website if you're uh, on YouTube. So uh, yeah, that's it. Any other words, Bird? <laughs> Nah. Nah. Screw them. <laughs> See you guys. Uh, not, don't, not screw you guys. <laughs> we love you guys. Um, we love you guys. We're just joshing. All yeah, right. we're turning the tables this podcast. We're actually friends now, all of us as a yeah. community. We love you. And uh, hope you see you next time for more. So I'm XO, out. XOXO, I'm Bird. See you later. Hologram Grotto Show. Bye-bye.